Welcome back to a skewed reviews and we've got another viewer request today and it is for the 1977 film Wizards. Here is your trivia question for today. Can you name at least two of the religious items from humanity's past that are in the temple? The answers will be at the end of this episode. So in this story, humanity has almost been completely wiped out by nuclear war. After about two million years, we now see who's left. The vast majority of humans have now been changed into mutants. Along with these creatures, the original ancestors of the world, fairies and elves, are now starting to re-emerge as well. The world then sees 3,000 years of peace, and near the end of that time, the queen of the fairies, Delia, gives birth to two wizards, Avatar and Black Wolf. The kind-hearted Avatar grows up in Montagar with his mother, taking care of her until she passes. Now his evil, mutated brother Black Wolf leaves the land, but vows to return one day when he can change the world into a planet ruled by mutants. Another 5,000 years have passed, and Black Wolf is now the ruler of an army of mutants and demons, which he plans on sending to Montagar to snuff out all that remain of the fairies, elves, and humans. Now Black Wolf may accomplish this as he is armed with a projector from the old world that gives off the power of propaganda. In Montagar, a small band of heroes is being assembled to head to Scorch and see if they can take out Black Wolf. This group consists of the wizard Avatar, his protege Eleanor, who happens to be the president's daughter and was recently transformed into a fairy, Weehawk the warrior, and a robotic assassin sent by Black Wolf named Necron 99, who has been converted to the other side and renamed Peace. So will this band of heroes be able to make it to Black Wolf and defeat him before his army will take over the rest of the world? This movie was written and directed by Ralph Bakshi. The original title for this film was War Wizards. It was actually at George Lucas's request that Bakshi changed the title as he was worried people would get confused with this and Star Wars. Speaking of George Lucas, he actually recommended Mark Hamill to Bakshi as a voiceover actor. Hamill originally auditioned for Weehawk, but ended up playing the character of Sean. This was Mark Hamill's first time doing voiceover for a feature film. Bakshi's wife and daughter, Liz and Victoria, were the voices for the fairy mother and the fairy girl. Bakshi himself did the voice of Fritz and a couple other random characters. Ralph Bakshi loves to take existing film and put animation over it to add to his scenes. In this film, what is called the Shadow Warrior footage, it actually comes from a few different movies. Zulu, El Cid, Patton, Battle of the Bulge, Charge of the Light Brigade, and Alexander Nevsky. Apparently the reason why the horse-like creatures in this film only have two legs instead of four, is it was just easier to animate. Larry the Lizard was influenced by the character of Gollum from The Lord of the Rings, which Bakshi would actually adapt into an animated film the following year. In case you were curious, the Hobbit animated film that came out the same year as Wizards was not done by Bakshi, but Rankin and Bass. And then, in 1980, Rankin and Bass would do an animated version of The Return of the King. In the film, the line, they killed Fritz, they killed Fritz, is a reference to Robert Crumb killing off Fritz the Cat in his comic book series. Now, the reason that Bakshi made this reference is because he actually directed the film adaptation of Fritz the Cat in 1972. When Weehawk is falling into the chasm and Avatar tries to save him with some magic words, those words are Maro, Crinkle, Frizetta. Those magic words are actually a reference to three of Bakshi's friends. Gray Morrow, Roy G. Krenkel, and Frank Frazetta. The art style of this film is heavily influenced by the work of underground comic legend Von Bodie. The plan from the beginning was to make Wizards into a trilogy. Now unfortunately that never happened, but there was talks at one point of making a Wizards 2 where the plot would have focused on Avatar and Eleanor's failing relationship and how Weehawk would somehow get inserted into this like a love triangle. Also, there apparently would have been a bit of a time skip, as Black Wolf's son would be back, trying to pick up where his father left off. It is commonly believed that the television series Adventure Time 
was heavily inspired by this film. So when it comes to the film Wizards, it definitely at times can be a bit slow and a bit confusing, but it is a very interesting movie, especially if you really look into what the story is trying to tell. Also, the visuals are beautiful, and in general, Ralph Bakshi just always does a great job, in my opinion, of making movies. So I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 5. And if you did enjoy this movie, other films I recommend checking out are The Last Unicorn, The Flight of Dragons, Fire and Ice, and Heavy Metal. Now it's time for the trivia question from the beginning of this episode. Can you name at least two of the religious items from humanity's past that are in the temple? This sequence is fascinating, as Bakshi shows what people would think after the apocalypse we saw as religious items. You have a baseball glove and bat, two Coca-Cola signs, the front grill of a Rolls Royce, a peace sign necklace, a jukebox, a phone, an Oscar, a television, pinball machines, a microphone, and this last item is either an airplane propeller or a ceiling fan. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews, and if there's a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments.